Welcome back to SWAT Cops and more action from the Extreme Festival. As always with the Extreme Festival, not only action on track, but off as well. The clowns are in the house, the musicians are here, and we've got lots of entertainment for the youngsters as well, including a little celebrity, Jack Barrow's in the house. Bridgestone Challenge up next. Fantastic racing as always, and uh, when you came down to SWAT Cops, you expect to see some phenomenal racing when it comes to the Bridgestone Challenge, particularly in this class when they're here in full effect. 23 motorcycles going at it, and Nicholas Gürtenbach was the man to beat. Edwin Smith had to start from pit lane, so a little bit of a late arrival there for him, but he eventually got back up. Then some issues further down the field as the number six bike of Jared Letcher crashed out, and he would not get back into the action, unfortunately for him. Great to see Steven Sliebrich out there from race tyre support, not only supporting the guys with the tyre changes, but also getting on track and having some fun himself. Big Joe in the house. He's always a man to watch out for and had a fantastic outing here this weekend. Look at the battles we saw, though. Incredible to see how tight these guys get. And remember, these are still starting out in terms of what motorcycle racing is all about. Front-end battle started to happen, and Ian Thomas was trying to close down, but no one was going to catch Burtenbach. The West Side Motorcycles Honda across the line, and the big man taking the victory here for the first race. He came across the line ahead of Ian Thomas. Then it was Simon Bussin, Joe Herbig on the MV there in fourth, beating Safiso Temba, one of his best outings. Let's catch up with Henny Swanable from the Four Ways Flyers down in eighth. I had a big wheelie off the start. Um, I had to fight back a little bit, kept my position until the end, and you know, started a little bit with fitness. Uh, just came out of the hospital about a week ago. Um, but uh, it was well. Uh, I did low teens, and I'm happy with the times. Straight into the Bridgestone Thunderbikes now and just as good action expected out of these guys. A big field of 25 motorcycles coming to play. Upton is the man to beat and always will be here at SWAT Corps. Little bit of a bog on the start there, but he still managed to get down into turn one and get the whole shot around the outside and into second place. You can see a super start coming out of Sean Stotkart for Mark. On his tail, a super effort also coming out of Brian Bontekunen. Where Bontekunen found this pace, we'll have to wait and see. Can he keep it all together now for the rest of this heat? As the field streams through turn two, a massive field, and all of them on varying types of motorcycles. You've got Suzuki's, BMW's, Honda's, Kawasaki, probably the bike to be on, and a little bit of issues there for Pierre Krobler. Remember, he's the man who crashed out down in East London. Maybe still getting to grips with a few things. Problems, unfortunately, for Jordan Agliotti on the Honda as he went off on the Ridgeway race bar bike and had to park it on the sideline. Vincent Green with a big crash. He was then out of that one. In the mid-pack, in the sub-10s, Rian Fareed doing a great job looking for a top podium finish there. And Stoke cut for Mark, unfortunately, not able to find an answer to the motion perfection Yamaha up front. Rest of the field having a fantastic outing, but no one was able to catch Gavin Upton, who came through to take another victory here in the Bridgestone Thunderbikes. Winning out easily over Sean Stokecutt for Mark from Four Ways Flyers and Mornay Portkita there in third place. Bonte Gunning was fourth ahead of Damon Purificati and let's catch up with our only lady rider, Landy Sinden. I was playing catch up the whole race, so I had a bit of a bad start, so, but made up for it. I'm happy with the lap times. Suspension did a little, needed a little bit of settings, so yeah, sorted it out. Red Square ZX10R Masters Cup time now also on Bridgestone tyres as they have been since the inception of this category. 20 riders out to do battle here and we're on board with Garrett Poseidon off the line, the new man to the class. He heads down into turn one. It looks like Van Bredaar has got the whole shot and has ahead of Gruner, the man who was on pole position. As they go through there, a great start coming from Jakke Goos as they head down into turn two. Goos up into fourth place, Poseidon down to fifth. The rest of the field streaming through and getting through turn two. Everybody's still upright, great to see, and pushing hard. Oh, in the background, a couple of riders running wide, though. Gruner eventually snuck up on the inside and got through on Van Bredaar. The lead changed up into turn six, Kenwood corner, and Van Bredaar had to now look for an opportunity to get back. Right on his tail, though, is a hard-charging Brian Bontekuning. Bontekuning had something special for breakfast, there's no doubt about it. Fifth place battle, and beside note, eventually got through on Jakke Goos and started to make his way up to the front end. Safiso Temba, ever improving, not only here in ZX10s, but also in the other categories. And then a big off. A massive one there for Rod McLaughlin, heading straight into the air fencing. Did its job, but unfortunately brought out the red flag. McLaughlin, just as you can see, a little bit over exuberant, some cold bridge stones, and it just lit up. Fortunately, a low side, he went sliding along the motorcycle, high siding and into the fencing, and eventually ended up on the top. The rest of the riders coming through and saying, hang on a second, that's enough for the day. And we caught up with Rod to find out what went wrong. 
That's all our two wheelers done. Join us after the break for the Autobahn Super Hatch category.